Hi, it's Friday. It's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're a disabled led arts organisation based in East London in the main London 2012 Paralympic host borough of Newham. I'm Jude Gosling, also known as the artist Jude 90. We're here in my studio in Canning Town, myself and our chair, the artist and documenter Julie Newman. She, of course, as regular viewers will know, has been stuck here since March because it's better for us to live at work. That's the kind of organisation we are. Before I come to Julie for some audio description and introductions, I'm going to go to the other end of our long virtual wheeled sofa in the West Midlands to not only have some introductions and audio description, but because it's Friday, some explanations as to what you're dressing up to go out to stay in to do. That is our regular Friday feature, and we'd love to see photos and videos of you dressing up to go out to stay in as well. So over to Sutton Coalfield. Uh, hi, I'm Josh Sergener. I'm one of the other hosts of Together Unlocked, and I am a PhD student. Uh, Today I have my uh, ever-growing blonde hair that is now, I think, finally long enough that I can start kind of styling it into kind of surfer chic, uh, which is the the hopeful aesthetic, uh, and I think probably misguided in my uh, ability to style it. Uh, other than that, I have a little bit of a ginger beard growing because I need to trim that, uh, and I am wearing a sweatshirt that is uh, horizontal stripes. Um, of dark red um, and then kind of almost white it's kind of red and white kind of spackle I guess I think um, but without the pointy bits uh, and that is um, a jumper for the Miami Heat uh, because it is still the uh, NBA finals are still ongoing uh, so I am still dressed ready to to represent the team uh, courtside to cheer them on and hopefully they can um, win tonight so, yeah. so we'll come back to that later in our something for the weekend section where we recommend things that you can do at home online and offline so over to you robin yeah so hi i'm robin sergina i'm business director at together 2012 um, and also a artist no, an artist known as angry fish I think I, I should be able to say an international artist, particularly as I'm on iTunes and Amazon and everything else. Um, we could all sorry. say that, but for, for speed, let's just stick to <laughs> artist. Um, so, yeah, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm using my artistic eye to notice the very subtle difference between the ginger beer and the blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do I look like today? Today I am having uh, grey white hair. Um, as ever, um, reasonably well shaved. I am wearing no rimmed black armed uh, glasses. I'm wearing a blue, mainly blue polo shirt uh, with white strips coming down from the shoulders to under the armpit, which now the neck to the armpit. And then it says samurai on one side, which is shamelessly plugging themselves as the makers of the shirt. And on the other side is a union jack uh, with somebody playing wheelchair basketball, kind of sprinting away from the flag. Going out um, the flag. That's because my, I am going to be staying home, but going out to support a GB wheelchair basketball match. And just to finish up, um, in the background behind us, um, we have a white background, but uh, hanging, you can for those who can see, about two-thirds of a bass drum skin, which is decorated with a picture of a... Um, very looking angry fish with large teeth and the letters AF for angry fish. And that's on a sort of piece of fabric that's supposed to look a little bit like a marquee because, well, hey, we're just coming out of the summer, but soon to be swapped for those theatrical curtains. Julie, who are you? What do you look like? Um, and what are you dressed up to go out to stay in to do? I'm Julie Newman. I've got increasingly growing gold and silver hair. Unfortunately, I'm not a surfer, so I can't I can't aspire to such well, giddy heights. You do sail. Neither can I. I, I just, <laughs> uh, I've got dark rim glasses. I've got a black T-shirt with a cat constellation on it. <clears throat> um, 
And I'm going to pick up Professor Maggie uh, Pocock and we're going to go to the moon and have tea with the clangers. That actually sounds like the most attractive proposition I've heard for a long time. So I'm Ju Gosling, also known as the artist Ju90. I mean, Julie is actually really ginger or redhead, but faded to gold. And I'm an aspiring redhead, so I've been henning my hair for about 40 years. But although I do in more usual times actually surf, if only on a bodyboard, I have a self-styled corona crop which is a kind of very moth-eaten short hairstyle not one I think that's likely to catch on after 2020 2021 I've got black plastic glasses I've got black wrist braces silver colored jewelry and I'm wearing a white t-shirt with some South Korean writing on and also in English it says Kwangju Kwangju means city of light. It's a city in the south of Korea that I was actually so lucky to be invited to speak at a couple of years ago at the World Human Rights Cities Forum. So the World Human Rights Cities Forum takes place in Kwangju because they're a real capital of human rights. This, you know, every time, every year at this time and this year it's online too. So South Korea is nine hours ahead, so it's been a bit tricky to try and catch up with any of the friends that I made in South Korea, other than emailing them. But tonight I'm intending to stay up and attend the session that starts at nine o'clock in the morning, Korean time. You can work that one out for yourself. It starts at midnight. So it kind of depends how long I can stay up, how long I'm going to go for. But this is what I am ready dressed to do so I will be in front of YouTube or the website it's I think it's just a wonderful wonderful movement it comes from the kind of struggle for democracy and human rights in South Korea and other pan Asian Asian Pacific countries but it's just such a kind of powerful movement and the idea that each city can take individual responsibility for human rights I was invited to talk in a in a country that is not really renowned for the residents and kind of citizens respect for LGBT rights, but because of the overwhelming commitment to human rights, they wanted me to tell all of them how they could better include disabled LGBT people in cities. So I just found that really impressive, you know, had a lovely time. So I'm really looking forward to doing that tonight. I want to just move on now and flag up some of the rest of what you're going to see today. We have coming up, we have a profile first with Awa Jagne. Awa is a member of our associate drama company, Act Up Newham, and we're profiling the members as part of our Black History Month coverage. We also have an interview with Robin is interviewing the musician Remy Fox Novak. So very excited about that. And under something for the weekend, we will also be talking more about World Mental Health Day. World Mental Health Day is tomorrow. This show is dedicated to the memory of Aaron Basher and to his friends who are doing the Calm Walk World World Mental Health Day tomorrow. We're very aware of how difficult it has been in particular for young young people with mental health difficulties this year and the mental health burdens that it's placed on all young people, which of course have just got worse as On the one hand, young people have been blamed for the rise in infections. And on the other hand, many of them locked down at university or, as with Josh, locked out of university. So we think it's really important to um, commemorate that. We will be putting up links to everything we discuss on the show as usual on our highlights and links page. That page is under the main Together Unlocked TV page on our website. And there's also going to be a link to the fundraising page for Aaron Basher and the Calm Walk and more details of how anybody else can join in the Calm Walk, unless you're shielding of course. So did anybody want to add something at this point around World Mental Health Day? It's been going for a wee while. It's been going since the early 90s. Um, And it started off because uh, there were real concerns about 
people with mental health difficulties being treated internationally, in fact, globally, I suppose, is, is the better word. So the idea really was to um, raise awareness and to, um, I suppose, create a, a level of scrutiny um, within, within each country. Um, and significant changes have been made. And I think <clears throat> that's, that's worth noting because I know, for example, in Hungary, there, there were a lot of difficulties with um, disabled young children who had been put into institutions and their mental health was completely neglected. Um, so, you know, sort of I, I'm, I am mindful that things are changing. And I think the Calm Walk is a, is a very good example of it. But uh, there, there are websites where you can get further information. Plus, you can get information about if you need help or assistance. You can do it either by speaking to somebody on the telephone or by emailing them. And I think one of the if you like advantages of it being world mental health days it allows us to sort of look beyond this little island i know i was very struck when i was in kwangju to learn about people with mental health difficulties in japan who are almost always institutionalized you know we tend to forget with care in the community and indeed a total lack of services that in other countries it's not always like that. And the level of institutionalization in Japan is really quite shocking. Also, I think that's really been in the press over the last few days is in developing countries where there's no services and no treatment and all of the stigma, which in fact we still have here today, that people are chained up. And that is apparently very common in countries across the world where they just don't have services. And, you know, to think about being in emotional and mental distress and to be in chains, which also means you can't wash properly or indeed do anything else. And people are chained up in outhouses literally for decades. So it really does kind of not bring our own problems into relief because I think everybody's problems are very real. But I think it shows what we need to do in terms of not just including disabled people in international aid, but really making them central because it, you know, it's just shocking beyond words. And finally, of course, in our very own country, many young people with mental health difficulties in particular, if they're in mental distress, it's, it's redefined as challenging behavior. And then instead of them being seen as young people with mental health difficulties, they're seen as a problem. And of course, Panorama, among others, have exposed the appalling conditions. You know, most of these young people are hundreds of miles away from home. They're in private facilities operated on behalf of the NHS. The staff aren't trained properly. You know, there's been report after report. So again, I think if we look to the sort of institutions across the world and the chaining across the world. It's so important that our young people with learning difficulties in particular have a voice here. But we've done all the talking in London, so I'm going to go over to Sutton Coldfield. Can, can I just say, <clears throat> just picking up the CALM thing, that, which is the organisation. Which we will come back to. But it's, it's quite noticeable that 78% of young people who commit suicide are, are men. And this organisation is specifically for supporting men yeah and like I say we'll come back to that later but I do just want to give you two a chance to come in before we move over and have a look at the work of Arwa Jagne okay uh, great thanks I mean I I mean I was one of the things I was going to say was um you know the stigma that still surrounds it obviously is, is huge and and what that does is it makes people reticent to either be out you know be outspoken about their, their their situation or in fact to try to pretend that they haven't got an issue and i think that goes then that kind of goes back that what we don't do even in this first world country very well is tackle the whole wellness issue well well you know we, we hear all this you know you can go to every bookshop and find um you know packs stacks of mindfulness coloring books but what does it mean? What is it? You know, yeah, it's nice and calming to colour, perhaps, if, if that's what works for you. But I think that, you know, any, anything that raises the awareness and raises the question of, well, how do people end up with mental health issues? Now, obviously, I do realise that some of those are organic and 
would have happened anyway. But a lot of the situations arise out of how people experience their lives or the things that they experience within their lives. So if we can find ways of um, identifying the beginnings of the processes that lead to somebody becoming unwell, then we can address those situations much more effectively. And then hopefully there will be less people, young, old or otherwise, um, that actually end up experiencing uh, illness as opposed to kind of managed wellness. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And um, well, yes, I couldn't agree more. I can't remember exactly what else I was going to say, but no doubt it may pop back into my mind, in which case we will pick this up again, like I say, under something for the weekend when we look at some of the other activities that are taking part taking place to commemorate World Mental Health Day. But in the meantime, we're going to move on. And as part of our Black History Month celebrations, we're going to profile another member of ACT UP Newham. And then we have further profiles coming up next week on Wednesday and Friday. Hi, everyone. I am Ewa Jutney and I am 22 years old. And I am a member of Act Up New Hand. I like writing shows. Uh, right now I'm writing my own piece. During this lockdown, um, I have made a YouTube channel called uh, Relax with Our, where I do uh, a lot of exercise for the body and mind to help people to relax during the lockdown, uh, which I'm very happy about. Um, in the future, I'd like to open my own centre uh, for yoga and meditation. That that way in the future. was in a, a drug group at all, put outside the top before I went to uh, Orpheus. And in that show, my character hated uh, the show character. <laughs> The show to work is not my character from doing things that we did on the Sorry. I am 17 years old and I, I really think that that picture. I worry that there will be a public disability or a job for me to do. You are cutting all the money that has to do good people. Why do you hate the people so much? The reason why I love being is at up because I like to show people that I am, although I have a disability, but I can do uh, acting, I can do yoga, 
my disability things stop me from doing anything that I wanted to do. So I love Act Up and I love the people in Act Up. They are like my second family. This girl's cost money. 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 And they wonder why I shout. <laughs> <laughs> And I have to say, Arwa is one of my favourite young artists, disabled or not. And ACT UP will be back next week with another film for us and a rehearsing as I speak for their production of I Am Tony for the Together Disability History Month Festival. And we're going to be bringing you the programme for that on Monday. So do, do tune in till three. But this is a good opportunity for me to say that if you miss the live show, the recordings are available with embedded captions from about eight o'clock the evening and if you want to be sure of seeing the real captions from our wonderful team at Global Real Time Captioning it's probably best to watch it the next day because YouTube you can't really predict when they're going to process the captions but what I can predict is it always takes longer on a Friday so this live stream takes place as part of our join in from home program and what we're going to do next is tell you a bit more about how you can join in from home Together 2012 is running a join in from home programme from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, join in from home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. So, for example, we have an art club which usually operates on a Tuesday with craft-based activities and on a Friday morning for drawing and painting. Here you can join in with the Arts Club's Hands Project and celebrate your uniqueness and membership of the human race. There are full instructions on the linked page here. But essentially, we invite you to draw around your hand on a piece of card. It could be an old cereal packet. Cut the shape out, turn it over and decorate it with anything you would like to do. It could be paints, crayons, glitter, collage, beads, leaves, anything you can think of. Photograph your hand or hands and send it to us at tv at together2012.org.uk. We'll add it to our video installation and share it on social media. Our music club usually meets on the first Friday of each month. We have an open mic session and we invite everybody to play along with percussion instruments. So here you can learn how to make your own percussion instruments from recycled materials. And you can also join in a percussion workshop from last summer in terms of carnival percussion. So these three instruments are used most often in carnival. We have a shaker and a go-go and a hand drum. So this is how to make a recycled shaker, a recycled a go-go, and a recycled hand drum. You can also, if you're technically minded, make your own tactile sound instrument. This does require a few simple electronics, but is a very interesting and exciting project as part of our Vibrafusion ongoing work. You can also listen with Together. 
We have Spotify playlists created by Robin Surgener, also known as our TV presenter, Angry Fish. And we also have two classical music playlists from Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra, including one that's uniquely suited to people who are feeling very unwell. So that's more about our Join In From Home programme. The full video that tells you about all of the different activities is also available at the top of the web page. And there are videos, as they said, with BSL2. We're going to come back and look at some more visual arts next Friday. Um, if you're working at home, we'd love to see your paintings, drawings, any other kind of visual art, or indeed your poems, your films and everything else. But now we're going to celebrate a bit more music. And here is an interview that Rob been recorded a little bit earlier with the musician Remy Fox Novak. So I'm just going to pop that on. Hi and uh, welcome to uh, our, our, our inaugural music interview um, for the Together Unlock TV show and I would like to uh, introduce you to Remy Fox Novak who is a musician I've worked with previously and I think he would be fantastic on the show. So Remy, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi there, yeah. Um, my name is Remy Fox Novak. I uh, am a user, uh, mostly with the electronic music, um, although occasionally I sing and do other things as well. Brilliant. Uh, and whereabouts are you from? Uh, I, I'm currently based in Nottingham. Um, I was brought up in the West Midlands in Shropshire, um, which I still spend a lot of time in. So, Remy, what got you into music in the first place? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I have vivid memories of um, long drives um, up to Manchester, where that where I was actually born, um, where I was having consultations with various doctors and, and, uh, and operations. Um, so it was always a long drive, about an hour and a half from Shropshire. Um, and I just remember loving listening to the music in the car. Um, I mean, it sounds a bit sinister now, but my dad was quite into the Cockroach Orange soundtrack at the time. <laughs> um, but I, I absolutely loved it. I, I remember finding it terrifying, but in a thrilling kind of way. And I think that's always left quite a, a mark on me. I always loved listening to music in the car. Uh, although I don't drive, I don't really ride around in cars anymore, although wherever I walk, I've always got my headphones on. Um, so I don't know, um, electronic music always seemed, I was exposed to electronic music quite early on, so um, it, it, it felt natural to go uh, in that direction. Also, because electronic music perhaps more accessible for those with disabilities. I've um, played with various bits of software over the years, um, I eventually did a music technology course at A level, well, B tech level, um, where I learned sonar and other um, digital audio workstations. I just kind of flowered on from there, really. I've Do you feel that your music is a reflection of? your life at all so do you try you know you talked about journeys and you talked about hospitals and you talked about the clockwork orange where does your music come from what inspires you um i, I suppose it's always an expression of my feelings and i mean um I, there have been times when i've written popular music and i suppose that comes from a happier time and place um, but I think since I think the last time I was in that mode was early 2016. <laughs> um, things have got a bit strange since then, and so I think my music has become noisier, um, more aggressive since then, um, and I think that's a reflection of my own mood um, and how I um, see the world. I'm quite a politically engaged person. I keep up with the news. Um, not just here, but around the world, America, etc. Um, and whilst a lot of my music is instrumental, uh, I, I like to leave um, some calling cards about how I'm feeling in in the titles and um, yeah, the little little uh, things like that, just to signpost the feeling that I'm having when when writing this music. Okay, so um, 
to bring it kind of up to probably the last six or seven months, um, you know, lots of creative people have found lockdown both inspiring um, and blocking kind of at the same time in different ways. So, well, as a disabled person and an artist, kind of what has your lockdown experience been? It's been a bit of both, as you say, actually. I think um, I, I'm at Hewer, I, I, I look after uh, people with cerebral palsy. So I've been working throughout this pandemic. Um, and on, I, I suppose on that side of things, it's that's been a, a hint of normality. And that, that I've had, you know, still been commuting every day and not every day, but, you know, um, regularly. Um, in terms of uh, creatively, um, it's a double-edged sword. Um, I think having all that time has been great. I've finished a couple of albums, which that's fantastic. But on the flip side, um, I'm lost at the moment in terms of promoting, in terms of getting those things released, or or whether to get a commission or um, all these kind of things. I, at the moment, I'm I'm kind of Cut that out my my headspace. It's not on purpose, but to to, to help with the reality of the pandemic and um, you know it's been it's been difficult. It's been a long distance relationship. I didn't see my partner for uh, like over a hundred days, um, and now it's you know it's looking like we're having more lo lockdowns. I might not see it again for a little while. Um, so any spare time I've had has really been to to reconnect. Yeah, on the creative side. I'm pet creative. Um, a small bonus has been that I've saved money, and so I've spent money as well, like on the ridiculous thing behind us. Um, so creatively, it's very good. I, I think uh, it's allowed me the time and the finances to build my um, my studio, so to speak. But on the other side, it feels like. Yeah, I, I can't play any games. I can't actually uh, get out there and perform. Uh, I, I, I definitely love going to see people play live and uh, play live myself in front of an audience of people. Um, I think as the same person, um, I don't know really. I feel lucky to have like um, a support family who I'm living with at the moment. Um, I I work lucky at the people with disabilities as well. so. I, it always puts my own disability in perspective. But yeah, a, a lot in terms of opportunities, you feel um, a bit stuck at the moment. Okay, no, well, I mean, I think, you know, you you are um, by no means unique. And I think almost most experiences are paralleled, people's experiences are paralleled in some way of that. Um, so just, you alluded earlier, kind of in your introduction that you, you've used electronic dance music if you were to say to, to another disabled person who you knew would struggle with a traditional um, instrument, how would you sell them that electronic music is a way forward? Well, I mean, electronic music is very broad. How we can make electronic music is extremely broad. I mean, um, and the, te the technology is amazing now. Um, you can make music on your mobile. Um, I have thought a lot about how to make, um, like, um, music making uh, or music playing rather than making uh, it doesn't no one has to make records or you know do all that kind of thing but just to enjoy like play music um how can that be made more accessible so like i say i work with people with palsy so one of the things that i found very um liberating was these touch rings these tablets ipads etc but that's not necessarily for everyone certainly some people have like real difficulty with their motor skills to be able to um, to actually manipulate a, a very sensitive touchscreen. Just keeping on the program to be to be quite frustrating for some people. Um, I'm not that techy, which may surprise you. I, I'm not interested in computer games or anything like that. Um, yeah, I did want to make guitar. I just um, Unfortunately, with my hand, so my left hand, which uh, pretty much does most things, my right hand, which is, uh, it lets me down quite a bit. Um, so with the guitar, it was like I had a left-handed one, and the right-handed ones, I couldn't uh, 
couldn't scrum then. And then with the, the left hand in one, my, uh, my, my right hand just couldn't uh, like, uh, manipulate the fretboard. Uh, so um, it, it really depends on the discipline, I'd say. I think um, there's all sorts of um, like clever uh, routes out there. Like I, I did a um, commission with great music and we're always looking to try and make um, um, not just music making, but music playing and instrument creation accessible. Even if it's not making music at the end of all, I know some people who just love the machines and don't actually care about the the making the song. They just love that they program uh, this um, instrument. Um, yeah, electronic music is just more accessible. It's more immediate. Um, you can. It is possible now to 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 make full songs on your mobile phone or your computer or whatever. Or there's all these various boxes and combining days and um, it really does depend on what someone wants in out of it. So Remy, you've recorded as a piece of music today, which we've got a film showing you using your technology to create the sounds. Would you just like to give us a really brief introduction into the piece? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, um, it's, it's a limited piece that I've um, prepared for uh, this uh, broadcast. So it came from um, me creating a sound on on the hardware, but also into interacting with the iPad as well, um, and then using a um, controller which I've lost it now. Oh no, here it is. <laughs> with this thing, this is fantastic. By the way, it's wireless, so it's always a lot of fun to to play with that thing. Um, and as much as it's 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 just to be playing with knobs and the uh, and the um, the touch panel thing over here. Um, it's all about how I make the sound in the first place and how I programmed the machine to do. So all that took about two days to actually program the things, but then play it. Yeah, it's a doddle. It's, it's printing knobs and <laughs> buttons. Well, and you make it look simple. So thank you very much, Remy. Um, and I look forward to being able to work with you in the real world again sometime soon. Yeah, it will happen, you know, this, this won't last forever, this uh, pandemic. So, you know, I'll, I'll say to everyone, you know, keep safe and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see each other again. Thank you.
Wow, thank you very much indeed for that, Robin and Remy. We always have live music on a Friday, but that's the first time it's been composed especially. We do have, I have to say, a couple of anthems where we have rewritten the words. You can find them under the Together Unlocked TV pages. There's a special page for that. There is also a highlights and links page. It's the first thing you'll come to after the main shows. We'll put all of the videos from today as well as the links up onto that page. So if you'd like to see the interview with Remy again, listen to his music or find out more about Arwa, that will be under highlights and links, along with the links to everything we've discussed so far and everything we're going to talk about now as we come on to recommend for you something for the weekend. I think what we'll do is start with the things that don't relate to World Mental Health Day and then we can spend a bit more time on that. And for once, if I can grab my piece of paper, it's amazing how we're surrounded here in the studio by technology, but we still run out of gadgets and everything critical is on paper. So I am going to recommend to anybody who is interested in LGBTQI plus films, there's a wonderful film festival taking place physically in Cardiff, but available online everywhere called Iris. And Iris is a prize. So it's the world's largest short film festival prize. And this year, the festival is completely free. So not only do you not have to go to Cardiff, you also don't have to pay. And they're premiering the different films, but then they're also keeping them online the whole of October. So it started on the 6th, which I think was Tuesday. Yeah. It runs through the weekend. There's some great live stuff tomorrow and Friday because you get the live prize awards and you also then get the live DJ tomorrow night. And then there's live stuff all day tomorrow. But also everything they've been showing since Tuesday is already there to watch online. I always think the nice thing about short films is if you don't like them, they're soon over. <laughs> and if you can't concentrate for very long, you can take in the whole story. And just the variety, our own film festival, and we'll tell you a bit more about that next week, is mostly short films. We also do show features every evening, but I just love the variety that you get from short films. So if you want to see something a bit different, you certainly don't have to be gay to watch it. That's the Iris Prize films in Cardiff, but free all over the world through October. Um, Judy, what have you got for us that isn't World Mental Health Day related? Um, Sunday afternoon, the British Library has got 20 poets reading a poem each uh, as part of a prize. Uh, and that's all online. Um, I can't remember the name of the prize. I think it's something like Forward Prize. It's, it's, it's not a particularly remarkable name. But I'm looking forward to it because there's a range of poets and I think it would be very interesting to hear, you know, just from different people. Yeah, and of course, although I forget her name at this instant, I think it is Louise, though, a woman poet, won the Nobel Prize for Literature this week, which was apparently very unusual indeed. But I don't know her work. I saw a lovely photo of her with Barack Obama quite recently, but I'm really looking forward to reading her work. So indeed, we will pop both of those poetry links up and look forward to next Wednesday when we once more celebrate all things poetry with the Together Pop-Up Poetry Club. So over to the West Midlands, who wants to start? Um, so I can start. So I had a couple of um, arty ones. Um, so the German Society of Nature Photographers um, have just announced their kind of winners and runner-up for their 2020 nature photography um, competition. Um, and they've just kind of put those out and there's there's an overall winner and then there's kind of winners and runner up um the, there's lots of different category uh, categories there's kind of mammals birds water landscapes um and there's some i mean we're looking at them before the the show there's some amazing photos in there um so yeah if you've got kind of five minutes and that that's something really interesting to kind of to look through because yeah there's some incredible pictures and um, presumably for anybody who's been watching the show regularly 
one of the things we look at on a Monday is photography and film. And over the summer, and I'm sure we'll come back to it over the winter, we've talked quite a lot about nature film and photography that you can do from home. So, yeah, and I imagine as well the backgrounds in Germany and Central Europe are going to be a bit different as well. So, yeah, that sounds really relaxing and good for mental health. Um, and then the other one uh, that also links in with um, Monday's show, um, I'm in a bit of a Star Wars mindset, having played the new game and there's the new series coming out at the end of the month. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to do this weekend is rewatch Star Wars because um, I love Star Wars. It, it's great. Um, and there's loads of films. I think there's 11 films. Um, so what was what will be on the highlights page is a a recommended viewing order if anyone wants to does want to watch Star Wars or if you haven't seen it or rewatch it. Um, Lost track but, about the third film, which of course confusingly is now no longer number three. So yeah, I'll be checking that one out. Yeah, I can't there's promise there's I'll watch it. Recommended them. viewing order, um, and aside from kind of being good fun, um, you know some of the the, the filmmaking. And, and, and technology that's used in them is truly you know groundbreaking some of the work from the films in the 70s through to the stuff that came out last year um you know it, there's some truly incredible kind of advances in filmmaking um but also the kind of the, the the story and how it relates to today's world is also kind of quite good and quite important so and very escapist just when we need it most robin yeah, just just to add that, I mean, I one of the days I'll find out whether we can, as any chance of getting him anywhere near one of our shows. Um, but my best mate's brother is a film producer, director, um, animator called Darren Walsh, um, and he he made like all of the adverts with the the, the go the gophers, the bees for the phone. Um, and 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 it, but he's done work with Spielberg and Lucas and stuff, so he would be really great. But that whole Star Wars thing, I remember where he, he, he talk about where, they, where where you do your art. Um, he literally drew the star. He drew he redrew Star Wars on their bedroom wall, and it was incredible. And he was about nine at the time, <laughs> you know, a full exploded view of the Millennium Falcon and all that. Anyway, so. Um, that unfortunately, I don't think his bedroom wall is online. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so for the weekend, I mean, I'm actually going to move it on a bit now and start to look towards uh, the fact that it is World Mental Health Day tomorrow, and we're going to move into that as discussion. So, um, my idea for the weekend um, really is is a kind of a wellness activity. We talked we talked a lot about how you can kind of be creative to help yourself. Um, various activities that you might use to um, for for calmness or to um, you know, for cathartic reasons to, to get your feelings out. And I, what I've come up with is something that I'm going to endeavour to do myself. I mean, it might start this evening or tomorrow morning, but it's to actually kind of set myself a challenge to write a word, a sentence, or maybe something ever so slightly longer, but something very quickly, something that will only take a couple of minutes, every hour, every 90 minutes over the weekend. So I'm putting down how I'm feeling at that moment. So it's not looking out the window and wondering. I want people are going to actually take that thought as it is at the moment, put it down. And then at the end of the weekend, put those in order or certainly look at them in order and then use that as some kind of a platform for it could just be a list of how I felt, but it could become a poem. It could become a song. But I think what I would like other people to do to think about, and I'll kind of put a I'll write a brief description for the website, um, is that idea is that if you it's kind of like an, an hour, like a wellness diary, but it's done over 36 or 48 hours. You don't have to get up in the night. OK, <laughs> um, but, but, it's far but anyway. well, yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you're up in, in <laughs> crank two. Um, uh, yeah, but I just you know, and it'd be really nice. And actually, f f from a from a show point of view, if anybody, if any viewers out there, listeners out there, um, do do this, it would be really great to have that sent in for preferably Wednesday as the kind of creative writing day. But certainly to see that from as we move forward. 
Yeah, I think that's a brilliant idea. And we, again, we've talked on Wednesdays before about some of the cut-up poetry techniques and um, our international artist, the club's programme leader, Alison March, and, you know, we've looked at her poems and how she literally takes other poets' words and cuts them up. So it's a kind of extension of that, but with your own words. And I think if I remember to do it, and this is a whole different issue when you don't have much short-term memory or a memory reap memory prompt I might just look for between one and three words you know so that it doesn't become a chore yeah I just write down like say one or two three at the most words and then think about adding them all up later and often poetry comes from those times when you're really focused on your feelings and then you can think about well what is it that's made me feel like that and if it's something external that's quite a good time to start writing about it if you're into that kind of thing not compulsory <laughs> No. Do you think of a visual arts equivalent? Is it a doodle an hour? I, say, I mean, I was always a doodler. My do my, my my I have if I'd kept them, I've got some amazing doodles, but they're very sort of um um like fractal, if that's the right description. They 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 they're not images, they're not shapes, they're not real things in the world. But I was forever it, you know, I I think that was an kind of calmness activity and I would just draw shapes very kind of you know and and kind of spiders webby type drawings um so I think yeah I mean and you could do that really quickly draw a shape I mean literally what shape are you feeling if you can do that you know <laughs> yes if you were going to be a drink would you be I don't know a very very cold glass of milk would you be a boiling hot cup of tea? Yeah, there's all sorts you could really push it through. I think I might just stick to the words. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, do you want to um, add something in? Because I know you were going to tell us, for example, more about calm and, um, you know, just the things that are happening in general for World Mental Health Day. Is there a theme? Uh, yeah, I think it's about getting people to talk about it. I, I think that's generally the theme. Um I think that's okay. I think if people are aware, that helps. Um, it is an awareness day after all. But I think ultimately, in my own experience, when, I mean, I spent years, decades actually, in and out of psychiatric hospitals when I was a kid and, and a young person, um, I've got a very strong sense that you can't, you can't get into anybody's head when they're in that sort of state. They certainly couldn't have got into mine. What helped, I think, possibly, was having people move alongside me, and that broke down the isolation. Um, I couldn't communicate, and a lot of people can't communicate easily. So I think just being alongside somebody is useful to have a distraction if you can, if you're able to go for a walk. Um, or, you know, listen to some music. Uh, we've got the playlists, which I think are excellent. Um, or distract yourself by watching something on the television that has no point. I mean, Formula One comes into mind here. But, you know, sort of like if, if you've got something that, that just distracts you from a few minutes, and if you, if you can extend that time further and further, almost, you know, like a, a, a step program so that, you can distract yourself for 10 minutes and then maybe go to the loo or, or move, come back again or, you know, watch a program for half an hour, move and come back again. That half hour has passed, that 10 minutes has passed, so you've got through another period of time. And then, you know, hopefully as, as the day progresses, um, there might be more to distract you. There's certainly more on the television in the evenings and, uh, and the radios. So... You know, and there are helplines. Use them. Yeah, thank you for that, Judy. That's very helpful indeed and very powerful. We had Mental Health Awareness Week in the UK back in the summer where the theme was kindness. And I think it's really stayed with me that what Robin said at the time is we have to start by being kind to each other. There are many people of all ages experiencing mental health difficulties for the first time, unsurprisingly. I remember, not in the context of mental health, but perhaps more in terms of holistic health, a very wise consultant whose name rather hilariously was um, Mr. Croc. And um, what Mr. Croc said to me 
um, I don't know, sort of back in the 90s when I'd finished my PhD, I'd split up with my partner who's my carer and so on and so forth. And he said, what you've got to remember is there's enough stress to drag a cart horse under. And if you're still standing, you're doing well, but you've still experienced that stress. You know, none of us can deny that this is probably the most challenging period in world's history for 100 years. We're all that cart horse pulling against, if you like, the most and dragging behind us as we continue on our way. Burdens that we can't actually get rid of at the moment. So we need to be kind to ourselves and say, well, if we are experiencing any kind of symptoms that we wouldn't have done in the past, it's not surprising. And, you know, as always, impairment is normal. You know, it's a normal part of human life. Josh? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of follow on from what Julie was saying. Um, we talked about it a little bit um, early, earlier in the show. Um, you know, there's such a strong connection between physical activity and, and mental health. And, um, you know, and if that does mean you can get out and go for a walk or a run in the local park, if you can do that, or, you know, it might just be doing some stretching in, in, in at home or getting on YouTube and finding a meditation video or something, you know, that a little bit of physical activity does help with mental health. But I think the other thing that you were saying around kind of distractions and things, I was um, listening to Christian Bell talk is an actress about her struggles in mental health um and she said you just need to do the next thing you know, if you if you wake up and you're just like i can't deal with today you know don't deal with okay i need to brush my teeth go and brush your teeth then you need to go and eat some cereal go and eat your cereal and then just at each stage okay what's the next right thing that i need to do and do that and you know like you said if you know, if you get through 10 minutes, you can get through the next 10 minutes and the next 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah, if you are feeling overwhelmed, don't think about what you've got to do in three years time. Think about what you've got to do in the next three minutes. Yeah, we're all on a time ship at the moment. I mean, hilariously, my name, my genuine name is Dr. Jew, which I quite like, particularly as I have an assistance dog, K9. We've been stuck in the studio without going out for over six months now. And I know at one point, because I've got these sort of little triangular shaped um, foam walls in the studio, which are soundproofing, he said it's just like the TARDIS. And we thought, yes, we are traveling through time to the point when it's safe to go out again. And I think in mental health, it can be about let's just travel through the next few minutes and we've got somewhere. And now we've only got to get through the next few minutes. But having said that, we have got less than a minute left of air. So it just falls to me to say on Monday, we will have our usual app date, where I will also be discussing why fitness and health are not necessarily the same thing. Having just been shackled to an Apple Watch as um, part of my so-called flexible social care package, we have a range of things on a Monday, but we focus, as I say, on photography, film and performance, and we will be announcing the main acts for the Together Disability History Month Festival, but we'll also be having a very special guest. So look forward to that. The show, as always, will be up with enhanced recordings and captions later. Something for the weekend, along with all of our highlights, links and videos, will be online on our page by about six o'clock tonight. And if you want to explore the other pages, you can also have a look at our Together anthems that you can sing along with or cheer yourself up a bit more by looking at some of our animal hosts. <laughs> Most recently seen really love bombing Julie in the middle of a rather important speech. So we all enjoyed that. I'm collecting outtakes for our festive Christmas episode. <laughs> so with that, I will just say stay home, stay creative and stay well. That's it from Together Unlocked for another week. Have Goodbye. a great weekend, people.